Hey guys, this is Blaine from Earhart Racing RC, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Trackmate Racing RC Lap Counting System. This system is pretty cool in that it helps us get our races in and do practices and uh, monitor our improvements over time. Now some of the subscribers may have seen my 114th scale track and the 124th scale track, and we use this system on both of those. And that's the first thing that I want to talk about. What's cool about the hardware that it comes with is that it's really modular. It's up to you to decide what you want to use it for. It doesn't come with a cool little bar for your track or anything like that. Now this takes a little bit of effort and experience with possibly woodworking tools or how to cut PVC pipes or something like that. But honestly, I think that allows you to use this in a lot of different ways. We've used this on our 14th scale track and our 124 scale track with a lot of success. I find that I really like my little Little wood bar for the 124 scale track because I'm not worried about water or anything like that getting on the sensors and the wood bar is really thin and it works for the track but then on the bigger track I want something more durable sturdy and possibly can take some weather beating now I'm not saying that this bar is particularly waterproof but it is a lot more waterproof than that piece of wood now what I'm really trying to get at is that it's versatile as long as you're willing to put in some time and effort into this thing it's willing to give you the time and effort back in terms of fun and excitement depending on what you're trying to do. I think if you really wanted to you might even be able to get this out on some water and as long as everything's waterproof and you get the ethernet cable back to the computer everybody's gonna be happy and you could have a boat race. The next thing I wanted to talk to you guys about is what this accessory adds to the experience of RC. What's different about this accessory than almost any other accessory is what fun it can add for other people. RC isn't just about you and what you're doing. A lot of the time you want to do it with other people. And I feel like this is a really awesome way to get people involved and to have a lot of fun with the hobby. Because there aren't a lot of things that can do that. I feel like when you go out there and you're jumping them off stuff and you can rally them up hills and go through the grass and bashing them into each other and if you love bashing that's awesome but there's also a different aspect to RC cars and that's racing and you might be missing out on a large portion of that if you don't have a track near you or something like that and if you have a track maybe you just go to that and you all have fun but what I really like about this is that I can race wherever I feel like it. As long as I have the laptop and all the hardware, I can throw this thing down in the middle of the desert and say, this is what we're racing today. You can't do that at a track, and that is a huge bummer. But that's what this adds to it. If you want that racing component, kind of like the bashing component, maybe you should consider getting a lap timing system. Now, let's talk about the competitors of this thing, because it does have quite a few. The first is MyLaps. Now, MyLaps is gonna cost you a few thousand dollars just to get the hardware to actually read all the cars. Not even to get the hardware to go in the cars. I'm talking about those little tiny adorable transponders they sell. Those cost like a hundred bucks a piece and the whole setup is just extremely expensive. However, probably highly accurate. It's used in a lot of race centers across America. Now the cost of that thing is just way too expensive and I like my $500 price range. I felt like that was a good comfortable spot, especially for how many transponders I got with the kit. Another more realistic competitor is probably the iLab timing systems. And their hardware looks identical. The only thing I didn't like about iLab is, again, the price. I felt like their prices just didn't fit what I wanted to do. I wanted a ton of sensors and I wanted a ton of transponders. And for what I would have gotten at iLab, I can get a lot more at uh, Trackmate Racing. The last competitor I wanted to discuss is the Robotronic Lap Counting System. Now I couldn't find a lot of information about this system. I saw a couple videos with this system in it and it was mostly just driving with 124 scale and really small scale vehicles and that's what they advertise this system is for. My concern was is this might not work for 1 tenth or 1 14th scale cars. It might it probably would, who knows what the power behind those infrared sensors are, but I didn't want to take a gamble that it wouldn't when other people said that the other two systems that I was looking at would. Now of course I didn't cover all the competition in this video. I think it's critical to do your research and this is just the system that I found that works best for me, but there are tons of others 
and I feel like in the future we're probably going to get something that works on your phone or something really cheap and inexpensive because technology only gets cheaper as life goes on. One of the major differences I see between the two technologies that really drive the racing systems is that they use different ways of reading the cars. It's not that one is more accurate than the other, it's that they might be more accurate in certain conditions. The technology that the TrackMate system is using is infrared. And basically what that means is you have to drive a car under the lap bar. It sends up a pulse of light from the infrared transponder that is installed in the car to the infrared sensors that are installed onto the lap bar in order to get a lap to read. The key thing to know about this technology is that you have to have line of sight in some way. Now light can shine through the body of the vehicle if the paint is thin enough. However, if the paint is too thick, you're going to have to put holes in your body and some people might not like doing that. You could also place the transponder underneath a window which would make it read just fine. With the MyLap system, or something similar to it, it uses a cable loop underneath the vehicles that actually reads up through the vehicles. Now, it is important to note that as I said before, this doesn't necessarily make it more accurate. You can't bury the cable too deep because this technology is based off of magnetic induction. What that means is that it's going to need to get a signal from the car's transponder which sends a magnetic signal back through the coax cable to the decoder box. The key thing with this technology is that you don't have to put a hole in your car to make sure it works. However, it may limit the materials that you use for the construction of your vehicle as anything that can stop a magnetic induction signal, aka metal or carbon fiber, has to be accounted for. While it can read through some of those materials, the signal may be weaker and your car might not be read. While I don't know which one is more accurate, I can say I really do enjoy my infrared sensors. They haven't caused me a whole lot of problems and that the misreads have been mostly my fault. This is because you need to take special care when developing and designing your own track bar for your situation. For example, if you're going to try to install this on a 124 scale track like I did, I highly suggest that you develop a lap bar that only reads the light coming from directly underneath the lap bar. This includes making the lap bar shorter, using wider pieces of wood, and then using guardrails on the front and back of the lap bar as these infrared sensors are highly sensitive. For the lap bar we made for the 14th scale vehicles, we just used some 3 inch PVC pipe and zip tied the decoders on. This seems to work really well, however I'm making another lap bar that has the infrared sensors on the inside of the PVC pipe to make it just a little bit more secure. Alright, so I'm going to take a minute and go over the hardware components that the TrackMate racing system should come with. First we have the infrared transponders. These get installed into the vehicle. These particular transponders will take anywhere from 3 volts to 14 volts. Most radio receivers will be able to output this voltage. They also sell transponders that have the wiring for the Mini Z. The transponders come with a unique identifier which allows you to attach your name to it in the software. The transponder's job is to beam an infrared signal to the infrared sensors located on the lap bar. You may need several sensors depending on how wide your lap bar is. The kit I purchased came with networking cable that is the correct length to space these sensors. They say 14 cars can pass under the sensor bar simultaneously and still read. As I mentioned before, the lap bars do not come with the kit, but the sensors come with screw holes to make it so you can attach these to your lap bars easily. The last sensor in the chain is attached to another network cable, and mine came with a 20 foot long cable to connect to the decoder. The decoder's job is to take all the information passed down from the light sensors and make it readable by the computer. The decoder is also hooked up to a USB cord that is then directly connected to a computer. The USB cord is about 20 feet and the power for the decoder and the light sensors is taken directly from the computer and then passed down through the decoder and into the network cables to power the light sensors. Once everything is hooked up, you're finally ready to go. That is, of course, if you've already installed the drivers and the software to do the races. The software is built for Windows, however, I would like to note that I did get this to work on Wine for Ubuntu 
It was a complicated process, and I'm not going to post about it because I can't remember exactly how I accomplished it. The software is simple enough, and it allows you to set up different types of races. You can play in practice, qualified times, qualified laps, race timed, or race laps. A cool feature about this system is because the transponders come with a unique ID, you can register those in here and tie a name or something else to that transponder ID that will show up when you're racing. The software allows you to save the race data so you can go back and see if you're improving. I think they could have done a lot better job with this and tied it up to a user profile or something like that to make it easier for us to see if we're improving instead of having to build an Excel spreadsheet or something crazy like that. As you're racing, the software will make noise. You can hook these up to big speakers to make sure everybody can hear them. You can also change the noises that the software makes when somebody completes a lap, has their best lap, and several other options. The software has a bunch of other features that I'm not going to cover in this video. I'll put a link below to the manual so you can figure out what all it does. However, there are plenty of other software options out there if you're looking for something a little bit more serious and complex. For now, we've been pretty happy with their software. Thanks for watching Earhart Racing RC. Next week I'll be doing a video on the 114th scale Tack On Thriller. Also, make sure you subscribe, like, and comment so I know you're watching.